Welcome back, I'm building a series to make a people management system. Let's see the program in action so we can print all the users and you can see them there and we can press enter and I'll just show off the remove user function. So if we press five and press enter, we can pick a user using one, two, three or four. Let's say we want to remove user four, successfully deleted and we don't want to delete anyone else and we can return back to the menu, press one and print all the users. And as you can see, the fourth user is now gone. If you want to try this yourself and come back to the video to see the solution, Go ahead and pause the video and come back. If not, the code is in the GitHub. Let's get started. In order to make our management system, we need to be able to store people. So let's define a person in a class. We have a public string name and a public int age. And because we don't want to make these exactly public, because we don't want other classes setting the values for these, we can have a get, which would be public, and a protected set, which would be private. And then we have the same properties for the age as well. Then we can remove the semicolon from the end. Now that we've got the basic class set up, let's just demonstrate how to use these properties. So we can make a person. And then we could use person.name equals something. But this is where the problem is. If you hover over here, it says it cannot be used in this context because the accessor is inaccessible because we have a protected set. Now, if we remove this protected word, then you can see it's not underlined anymore and we can indeed set the value. And that's fine. We don't want to be able to set the values in this form using equals. We want to only set it in the constructor since people's name and age don't exactly change. And if they were to change, we can make a method for that later. So let's make a public person. And inside this person, we can do this.name equals name and this.age equals age. And we need some parameters in here to make this work. So we have a string name and an int age. And now we have an error in here because we need to insert our new parameters into here. So we can type ABBA 23. And now these still work. So let's put the protected back into here. And now we can't assign them outside of the constructor. So therefore we have a protected set now. So if we wanted to print out the details, we could do person.name, add a hyphen and do person.age. And if we run that code using F5, then we can see the values have been outputted and it's been stored correctly. So in order to make printing out a user easier, we can maybe make a function to do this for us. So we could have a function here called public string. It's string because we want to return a string. And if you ever see void, that means they don't want to return anything for the function. So in this case, we want to return back this definition. So we say public string, return details. And we don't need to pass anything in the parameter because we're not going to give it details. We're just returning back the details we have already. So we could say return name plus a hyphen plus the age. And then now to make this easier, we could say person dot return details. And it's a function call, so we need the empty parentheses at the end. Now, if we run it, you should see exactly the same thing happen. Perfect. Because our menu will include edit person, then we need to be able to change the values of these properties. And because it's a protected set, we can't just do the following like we showed before. We need to be able to use a function inside here that lets us do the assignment. So let's try and do this. So we can have a public void because we're not actually returning anything back. We're just setting the age. So we can have a set name and then we can also do a public void and we can set the age. And in both of these functions, we need the value being passed into the parameter. So we could do string name. And then just like in the constructor, we can take this line and assign it into here and then do int age and the same thing here. So now all we're doing is we're calling a function called set name with a string and then simply just assigning it straight away. So now let's test this out. So we can say person dot set name and we can say app. And then we can also change the age to 20. If we print out their details again and hit F5, then you can see the details have indeed been changed. <laughs> and this is the safe way of doing it because we're using the functions instead of just changing the properties directly. We're using a protected set, which makes it a lot more safer. Okay, so let's just a quick recap before we move on. So we have a class person. We have two properties, their string name and an int age. And their get, because we wanted to publicly get the values, 
but we only want to set it from inside the class person or anything that inherits from it. And the same goes for integer age, a public get and a protected set. And then when we create an instance of the person class, we give it the name and the age and it will store it in our properties. If we want to turn the details of the users, we can say return details and it will put a hyphen between the name and the age. And then we can change the set, we can change the name, and we can also change the age should we need to. Perfect. Okay, so now it's time to make our menu and also our manager. So let's leave the code in here for now and let's create another class. So let's just make our class manager and we need a public list of persons and let's call them people. So let's say public manager. And then inside here, we can initialize the list. Once we've created a list to store all of our persons, let's construct the menu. So we can have a public void and we just print menu. And then inside here, we want to have lots of console write lines and let's start to build our menu. So we can use control D to duplicate the line. And we had five menu options. And I believe the sixth one was for exit. I will just forward this and populate the rest of the values. Okay, so now all the options are finished. Maybe we can add a little message at the top. Welcome to my management system. And that's it. And then maybe we can add an environment new line, which will just add a little gap between this line and this line. So let's just test this. So we haven't printed out the menu yet because we haven't made any reference to it. So maybe we can call it in here after we've created a new instance for our list. So in our main, we need to make a instance of our new manager class and we can forget about the person stuff now because we're going to be using person inside our class manager. And this was just to test our code. So we can make a manager manager equals new manager. And then that's it. We can just run it like this because when we call the new constructor on the manager, it will make a new people and it will print the menu. So let's hit F5 and see what happens. There we go. So we have welcome to our management system and we have our six options. So now what we need to do is be able to read in these options. So we can have a console write says enter your menu option. So we want to make an integer called menu option. And then we want to do console.readline. And that will read in everything they've typed in after here. But because this returns us back with a string, what we need to do is do a convert to in 32 and wrap the read line inside the parentheses for convert in 32. So this is two steps in one. So the console read line will return us back whatever the user types after this colon, and then it will take whatever they've typed as a string and convert it to an integer and place it into menu option. So just for now, we can print out menu option and just make sure that it works. And just a tip, if you press CW, then tab tab, it will load up control lightning for you. So you don't have to type it all out. So let's press F5 and see what we're up to. So now it says enter your menu option and we can type in five and it does indeed come out with five. So you know the menu storing it properly. The only issue with this so far is if we were to type something like hi, then we would indeed get an exception to say that it's in the incorrect format. This is a problem because now, as you can see, our program's crashed. And if you've just edited three users or added three users, and then you crash the program by accident, then you're going to lose all of your changes. So what we should do is implement something called try pass. I have a video on try pass if you want to click in the banner and come back to this video. And how try pass works, just a quick rundown, is it will try and convert a value for you. And if it's successful, it will store it for you and then you can use it. So let's just see how this works in practice. So we can have an if statement. And then inside the if statement, we can run int.tryPass. And then we can put in the value we want to try and pass, which will be the console read line, which is the string value. And then we can do a comma and we can say out int menu option. And then we can get rid of this line anymore because we don't need it. So what this will do is because try pass returns back a boolean value, we can actually place this inside an if statement. If this line is too complicated for you, you could try it like this. You could place this inside a boolean, and then you could say if try pass. And just another tip in here, you never have to write equals equals true. Because if you just leave the boolean on its own, then the compiler knows that this is true. And if you want to do equals equals false as a shorthand, you could remove that and just put an exclamation point at the start because this is the not operator. So if this on its own means if try pass is true, 
then this with the exclamation point says if try pass is not true. Try pass will return us back a boolean to say whether it succeeded or not, as it says here in the message, true if s was converted, otherwise false. So if we come into this path here, it means that the value has been converted successfully. So now we can have an else, and this path means that the value has not been converted. If the value has been converted, then our new integer called menu option now has the value. So we can do CW tab tab and we can print menu option inside here. And inside the second path, we can tell the user incorrect menu choice, just like that. Let's see what happens when we run it now. So we can enter our option five and you see it prints out twice because we have it down here and have it up here. So let's just remove one of them just to make it look better. So we can do five to remove user. And now it comes up with the five, which means it's stored correctly. Now if we type something like hi, you can see the program didn't crash as it did before, but now it comes up with incorrect menu choice. And what we can do is we can just say, press enter to try again. And then we could have a console read line to make them stop at this point. And then we could maybe call the print menu again. So we type in hi, and then incorrect menu choice, press enter to try again. And I press enter and it prints out the menu. But you can see that the code has been printed out twice. So maybe we can clear the console just to make the output look a bit neater because now it's just stacking on top of each other. So you can press control C to quit from the console instead of pressing the stop button at the top. And then just before we print the menu, there's a function inside console, cd console.clear, and then open the parentheses because it's a function call. And now let's try press F5 again. Print all the users. Let's try that again. Yep, that works. And then if we type in hi and then we press enter, it will call console clear and then it will print the menu again. So let's have a look. And now it looks a lot neater because it almost looks like the screen hasn't changed. So that's perfect. So now we have looping of the menu if they've typed in something incorrect. So now we need to write some code so we can actually implement these different menu options. So let's start by adding in all of the functions. So just outside of the print menu, we're going to need a public void. We can do print all and we can make these empty for now because we're just setting up the structure and we can do add person. I'll just skip past this just so you don't have to watch it. Perfect. So now we have print, add, edit, search and remove person. We don't need an option for exit because that will just close down the program. It's not going to do any sort of functionality. So what we can do in here is just do print and make these super simple just to make sure when we run our code, it actually works. So now that we've added in just a simple console write line inside each of the options, let's try and write some if statements inside of this path just to make sure we know that these functions are being called correctly. So we can say if the menu option equals equals one, then we can call print all. And then we can just chain them like this. So we can say else if menu option equals equals two. And then we can go through exactly like this. Add person. I'll just speed this up again. There we go. So we have option one, two, three, four, five to match these options. And we can ignore exit for the time being. So we have option one, print all, add person, edit person, search, and remove person. So let's run our code and see if this works correctly. So we have option one, and now it says print, which is perfect. Let's just try a couple more. Three means edit. And the last one we'll do is five, which means remove. So now we have our menu set up and all of our options call the right functions. And you can see the output appear in the console. So let's just have a quick recap of the entire program. So we started off by making our person class, which will have return details, set name and set age. So you can create them using a name and an age. And then later, if you want to edit the user, you can use the set name and the set age functions. And once you want to print out all the users in the print all function, then you can use return details and that will make things a lot easier. So let's just have a look at the definition for a person. And we have a public string name, which is a property that lets it publicly get, but only set inside the class. We have a public age, which is a public get, but only a protected set. And the protected set means you can only set it inside class person, which is perfect in our case, because we only want to assign it once. And then we can change it using our set name and set age later on, should we need to. 
and we can return the details using this simple function. And if we ever want to change it, like insert a comma instead, then we can easily do that here. Whereas if we wrote this in several bits of lines of code, then we'd have to change all the references to it. Whereas doing it this way, you only have to change it once. Let's change this back to a hyphen. And for our manager class, we have a list of persons called people and we initialize it inside the constructor and then immediately print the menu since that's our first action. And then we just print our welcome message and then our six menu options. We ask the user to enter menu option and then we we'll use this fancy function called try pass. Try pass lets us evaluate the string and try and turn it into an integer without crashing the program if it can't actually do the conversion. If it does the conversion successfully, then try pass will have a true value. If it fails, it will have a false value. If the try pass returns true, then we get our value placed into menu option. So if the try pass has indeed converted successfully, we print out the menu option just to make sure that our code is working. And then we check the menu option is equal to one, two, three, four, five, and then we call the relevant functions inside of here. And this branch is the extension of the try pass if statement. On the flip side, if the try pass were to fail, we would tell them they've got an incorrect menu choice that they need to press enter to try again. We do a read line which will help process this enter. We can clear the console and process the menu again. And then here are all the basic definitions for all of our prints. This is the end of part one. Please subscribe to make sure you don't miss the second part. In the second part, we'll be covering all of the code that is needed to make these functions work. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this video helped. I'm going to be making a C Sharp course coming up soon, so keep your eye out. In the meantime, if you want to check out my Patreon to support the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.